Welcome in lecture 9 devoted to uh, waves and optics. So here we continue uh, on uh, geometrical optics and images. So uh, we will focus here on spherical refractive surfaces and the application to lenses. So we have uh, we use uh, as usual uh, uh, the free ebook from OpenStax volume 3. Uh, Felix from Jean Cory and Fundamentals of Physics for Halliday and co-workers. So first of all, let's uh, define uh, a spherical uh, refracting surface. So, uh, he, uh, let's, okay, these are pointer. Uh, okay, so this is it. This is your. Uh, so it's a refracting uh, surface. So it means uh, it is the interface between two uh, media to transparent media, All right? So for example, in this case, you have uh, this medium uh, with refractive index N1 and another medium here in yellow with refractive index N2. And the interface between the two is uh, a spherical surface. Okay. All right, so as, you, as for all the uh, systems, we can define uh, P uh, the position of your object uh, to the, the surface, uh, the, the I, the, the position of the image, and R, because this is a spherical surface, we can define uh, the radius of curvature with point C. So uh, we could have um, so when N2 is greater than N1, so this could be air and this could be some glass, for example. Uh, a ray, uh, so you will obey as usual uh, Snell's law. So uh, you have to define your normal to that surface. And uh, it is uh, of the perpendicular to the tangent uh, to the surface. Okay, so the tangent would be something like that. So this is your uh, uh, normal. And of course that normal uh, crosses uh, the optical axis at C, the center of curvature. All right, so uh, because N2 is greater than N1, you have a bending towards the normal. Remember what we have studied earlier. So you will have a bending in this way. And uh, in this case, you will have, uh, so the image of point O will be point I uh, here, inside the, uh, this uh, material. So if uh, you have the opposite, let's, let's say that uh, N1 is greater than N2. So if, for example, you would have your object inside the glass and you look at uh, the image outside so you 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 write you make your drawing in this way so it's a kind of convention also in your books that uh, by default you put your object on the left side of the figure and uh, your image will be on the right side for normal simple systems in your book so in this case, uh, okay, let's take a ray like this. So again, it uh, you have to write to, to write here your uh, your normal, even though it's not really uh, accurate in this case. So uh, now you are crossing from uh, a slow medium to a fast medium. So you bend you bend away from the normal. Okay, so it would continue like that if there was no bending. So you and the normal is there, so you bend away from normal in this way. So you will intersect the optical axis at point I, which is the, uh, the image of point O. So in fact, taking this one and using the, the reversibility of, of, of time, you could just say that this is your object and you follow exactly the same path to find your image uh, here. And these are real images in both cases. So now uh, let's see cases where you can have virtual images. Uh, 
So let's take uh, again here you have n2 greater than n1. Uh, uh, okay, so that array will come like this. It will bend towards the normal because uh, this medium is slower. Uh, going like that. So you see here that that, that array will not intersect the optical axis, the real array. So we have to extend it uh, like this. So this is a virtual array until it crosses the optical axis because your image of that point will be on the, on, on the optical axis. So this is your image and you see that because it is it is uh, it intersect uh, uh, virtual rays, it is a virtual image. So someone uh, over there would see this ray coming and it would see the image uh, there. Uh, okay, this is the example of N1 greater than N2. And uh, in this case, you have uh, uh, the orientation uh, is in this way. Uh, it's uh, so uh, from the point of view of uh, the, the object this is a convex uh, surface but here for for this object this is a concave uh, surface and n1 greater than n2 so let's take um, a ray like this so because it is so n2 is smaller so it is faster so uh, this ray will be bent away from normal like this and again this will not intersect the optical axis so we have to extend the line uh, with a virtual ray until it intersects the line so this is your image virtual image so as for spherical mirrors we are going to use the Gauss approximation. That is, uh, we will need uh, uh, the angles to be small and rays to be close to the, the optical axis. So uh, we will see that we will get uh, stigmatism in such case. And uh, uh, one of our goals uh, here will be to find where is the image of uh, uh, that object by this uh, optical system. Uh, so we will get six stigmatism, we will check that later, if uh, we use the Gauss approximation, that is a small angle. So here you see that we will need to use a Snell's law, okay, at this interface, so given by this. And if we use Gauss law, so small angles, uh, we can uh, take an approximation for the sine. So sine theta is uh, can be uh, just uh, approximated to uh, theta. Okay, we neglect uh, high orders. So we replace sine theta by theta. Therefore, we will get just... Uh, so our Snell's law will just be n2 theta 2 equal n1 theta 1. So let's establish uh, a formula relating pi and r here. So uh, here we have we take this this situation. Uh, we have an object a o here uh, in medium n with refractive index n1. This medium has refractive index n2, and we will have an image i here formed on the optical axis. This is C, so the, the center of, of the, the sphere, like this. Okay. So remember, we are using small angles. So even though here they don't look small and they are not small on this figure, it is just a, a way to show clearly things. In fact, these angles, uh, alpha, beta, gamma, are very small. All right. All right. So let's find some equations. We need uh, I, P, R. So obviously, uh, fundamentally, we can use Snell's law already to get some information regarding this bending. And it is this. So here we, we introduced uh, theta 1, theta 2. So we have two unknowns here. 
we are supposed to know n1 and 2 so we need uh, more equations to solve that so as uh, in when we studied the uh, refracting uh, mirror uh, spherical mirrors we can also look at uh, relations between angles <coughs> so for example here you have alpha beta and theta one so uh, in, in this triangle you know what this, this what is this angle therefore you know uh, theta one and you can relate theta one with alpha and beta and this uh, considering this triangle so you know theta two you you know gamma therefore you know what is this and you can relate theta two with beta and gamma right so uh, in particular here yeah i exp i uh, wrote ex exactly the equation so you have alpha plus beta here <coughs> plus this angle which is pi minus theta one e equal uh, pi okay so this is just for uh, one example so this will uh, lead to this okay and uh, uh, using aci triangle you can get this all right so now we have one two three four five unknowns and three equations so we need more <laughs> okay but already we can just uh, get rid of one uh, using these two so we get rid of uh, of uh, theta uh, in fact we use uh, snell's law okay we use snell's law so n uh, uh, let's say n2 multiplied by theta 2 so in this equation we have removed theta 1 and theta 2 okay so in this equation now we have three unknowns okay so we basically need the two more equations at least to find that so the gauss approximation uh, remember we we did the same thing with uh, the spherical mirrors so for example beta beta can be expressed as uh, ac uh, divided by cc okay and uh, gamma uh, because it's a small angle we will say it is ac divided by ci and also alpha so this is a uh, really not looking good but it we can make an approximation that it is ac divided by oc so of course when the angle is small it's okay of course here it, it looks completely unbeliev un unbelievable but it, when alpha is small it's okay so these are three equations that can be written in this way so now we can just uh, rewrite this equation by replacing each of uh, these uh, uh, these values in, in it uh, just for the mathematical point of view we have one two three unknowns and uh, four unknowns because we don't know ac and we have four equations so uh, this is the end we should be able to solve now so okay we replace alpha by this uh, beta here by this and uh, gamma here by this so the ac will disappear and we will get a relation between p r i and n one and two and uh, this is what we get and this is the equation uh, of uh, for spherical refract refracting surfaces uh, if you know p you know r of course you know n1 and 2 you can find out i so here we can check that we have stigmatism in fact only uh, looking at this equation we see that uh, this equation is only related to the, the material uh, optical properties so we have r and uh, n1 and 2 but there is uh, no dependence on ray angles okay so whatever the angle here uh, you will your image will be decided by this equation so it is a, a fixed point 
on the optical axis. Therefore, all the rays will originating from O and intersecting this surface will uh, focus, will be focused at a single uh, point here. So this is uh, stigmatism. So this is a case in two uh, greater than in one. And of course, uh, in the case of uh, Gauss approximation. All right, so now let's see the sign convention. So remember, for uh, uh, spherical mirrors, we had uh, some convention for the sign of uh, R. And then uh, that uh, the sign of R was the sign of F. So here we, we do not have F, but we have R. So we have to find out uh, to decide a convention for that sign. So um, unfortunately, it's not just completely uh, the same as for spherical mirrors. So, but as with mirrors, we have uh, the object distance P is positive when on the left side, like in most cases, as I said. Uh, the image distance I will be positive for a real image and negative for a virtual image. So this is the same. However, uh, in order for this uh, particular uh, equation to work, so 34.8 is uh, for the, the book of uh, Fundamentals of Physics from Halliday and co-workers. We must use the following rule for R. So when the object faces a convex uh, refracting surface, convex, so it faces something like this. If it, the object is on the right side, Okay, so convex is like that, your object is there. The radius of curvature is positive. So the radius is there, huh, in this case. Uh, C is there. Uh, and in fact, it's positive. Okay. Uh, so this is something that I have myself uh, found out. I was... Uh, trying to get some sense to make sense of these uh, signs and uh, it uh, turns out that uh, uh, so r is positive when c is in is on the side of real images so yeah in this story usually positive things are real negative things are virtual okay so c is on the side of real images so real world in some sense even though both worlds are real in, in this case uh, so we take R positive. So when it faces a concave, uh, a concave surface, so let's uh, do it here, concave like this, your object is still here, but your C is also here, huh? right? C. Uh, R is negative. Okay, you have to deal with that. R is negative. And uh, in fact, in such a, a situation, C is on the side of virtual images because uh, this, the, the images on this side of the mirror will, uh, of the refracting surface will be uh, virtual in this case. So this is a way to remember uh, the sign. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, it is just the reverse of the sign convention for, uh, for mirrors. So if you have a, a convex mirror, R should be taken uh, negative, yes. And for a concave mirror, R should be taken positive. Okay. Uh, let us take an example. So here we have a Jurassic mosquito discovered embedded in a chunk of amber, which has a refractive index of uh, 1.6 so this is your amber one surface of the amber is spherically convex with radius of curvature uh, 3 millimeter so this is uh, that uh, convex so convex uh, from uh, viewed from uh, the air from here it will be convex uh, okay, and we have R, so we can build a C, C, the center of curvature, and in our um, 
so the, the equation of refractive surfaces, we know uh, the absolute value of R. We don't know, uh, we, we will have to consider the sign. Uh, we know N2 uh, and N1 because uh, one will be R, the other one will be uh, that amber. The mosquito's head happens to be on the central axis, which is very convenient, uh, at of that surface, and uh, when viewed along the axis, appears to be buried 5 mm into the amber. And uh, how deep is it really? So this is the image. The image is in fact at 5 mm inside the amber, so from this position, from the interface, on the central axis. So it's deeper compared to C. C is only at 3 mm and the image is at 5, so it's deeper compared to C. And the question is, where is O? So first of all, you may uh, try to, to make uh, a, a ray diagram. So imagine your, your object is here. So your ray would be uh, bent uh, away from the normal because this medium is faster than this one. Okay, so you would have a bending away like this, and indeed you would have your. So in that case, you would have your image farther than uh, than the uh, object from that uh, point. And what that says is that this uh, uh, okay, this uh, this image is a virtual image. We can see that. And in fact, you have another way to find out that it is a virtual image. Uh, the object and the image are on the same side of the refracting surface, uh, which implies that the image must be virtual. Okay, but you can see that clearly uh, with with uh, with a red diagram because uh, uh, the intersection of the uh, optical axis uh, has to be uh, found using op uh, virtual eyes. And indeed, uh, as I said before, you usually you take the right, the left side of your system as uh, the place where you put your object, and usually these places, re uh, in fact, uh, corresponds to virtual images. If your images is on this side, usually it is a virtual image. If it is on the other side, it will be a real image. Okay. Uh, we are not talking about mirrors, we are talking about refracting surfaces. All right, so this means in this equation i is negative because it's virtual, so it's minus 5. Okay, so uh, we have n1 and n2, so now we take n, um, n1 is uh, this, uh, this amber and n2 is air. We are looking in this uh, situation. And R, so R, we are now dealing in fact with a concave because we are on the left side and this is concave for us and, uh, and we are again on the virtual side for the images, so negative. Okay, so R is negative, so we have everything here, we just calculate uh, P and P equals 4 millimeter, which uh, indeed is in between C and uh, I. Let us now introduce uh, lenses. So a lens is a transparent object with two refracting surfaces whose central axes, axes uh, coincide. So you are familiar with lenses probably, you know, for example, this is one lens, this is also a lens, this is also a kind of lens. So uh, in fact, it just has, the, it's a piece of glass, so it has two uh, interfaces interfaces uh, between air and the glass and uh, each one is uh, is uh, in fact uh, generally a spherical uh, surface okay at least for cheap uh, now in cameras uh, they, they even put it as a commercial uh, uh, attractive uh, aspect of their product uh, saying that they have as as a spherical 
lenses in them to uh, to improve the the characteristics such as uh, stigmatism etc aberration also reduce the defects all right so here we are we are going to to look at conventional lenses that uh, include a refracting so spherical usually uh, refracting surfaces so in fact this one uh, in fact it's flat on this side so again flat can be um, can be said to be in fact a, a, a spherical surface with an infinite uh, radius of curvature all right so actually they have names so this one is a double convex uh, from outside you find this is a convex shape uh, this is pl plane or convex so plane on one side convex on the other one and this one is so called a convex meniscus so in fact it is uh, the radius of curvature is, uh, is are both for for this surface and for this surface are both on this side and uh, generally these are quite thin so that's why probably they call it a meniscus so it's convex from the point of view of the object which is generally on the left side of the system All right. and uh, of course we can calculate uh, the path of light through such a lens uh, using just a snail's law at the two interfaces so the first one here and the second here so this, uh, let's say this uh, index is uh, larger than here. So this could be air and this could be glass. Uh, you have a ray coming here. So because this is uh, slower, it would bend uh, towards normal. Uh, therefore, instead of continuing like this or diverging, it will uh, converge in this way. And then when it arrives at this interface, it has to uh, do the contrary, so it has to to, the, uh, to bend away from the normal. So if it were to continue straight, it would continue like that. So it bends away from the normal because this medium is faster. So you have a, a convergence of the ray. So at first you have a ray that is uh, horizontal here, and now it is uh, going down. So you also have a convert. Uh, so these are uh, uh, converging lenses. Uh, just before, so uh, a lens that causes light ray initially parallel to the central axis is uh, to converge is called a converging lens. So it is what we have just seen before. Uh, if instead it causes such light such rays to con diverge the lens is called a diverging uh, lens so like for example in this case so these diverging lenses are typically obtained by using con uh, double concave like this or plano concave or concave meniscus so indeed uh, in this case you have let's take a horizontal uh, uh, array that is uh, parallel to the central axis it comes like that, so it bends uh, towards the normal because this is a slow, slower medium. And here it has to bend away from the normal. So if it were not bending, it would continue like this. So it bends away from the normal. So indeed, this array is diverging. So diverging in the sense that it is not converging to the central. It will not intersect uh, the central axis at a... Uh, at least not at a real point. So indeed, let's see that. So the intersection of such a ray, so let's take a ray that is parallel, parallel to the central axis. We know that for a converging lens, it will converge towards, it will be bent towards the central axis. And the point where it intersects that central axis is called the focal point. All right, and for um, so let's see uh, all the the variables that we have here. So this defines uh, the focal point, uh, and we call uh, that distance from that point f2 to the cent center of the lens. We call it f. And because this point is real, 
we we say that f is positive okay this is uh, easy to remember real things are typically positive in these uh, conventions uh, here in addition to that you have f1 here so uh, so it's, it's just a symmetric compared to f2 so if you have rays coming from uh, this side it would and parallel let's say to the central axis it would converge to f1 or if you have rays originating for f, from f1 it would do what let's take uh, this example uh, pen blue let's say i have this ray what do you think how it will be on the right side so if you apply the, the typical uh, laws that we have seen uh, regarding focal focal points and the principle of reversibility of light it should be the symmetric so it should emerge parallel like this all right because any parallel array incident on that lens should focus on should uh, intersect the central axis at the focal point uh, f all right so we can also place uh, the center of curvatures uh, of the two uh, refracting surfaces so in this case it looks like it is a symmetric lens so they are, so you have c2 corresponding to that surface and c1 center of curvature for this this uh, surface and uh, you can call them r1 and r2 okay so uh, this is one this is two looks a bit strange uh, okay so but c1 correspond to the piece of the lens that is on the left side which we call the one okay this index is one for things that are on the left side so that's why f1 is uh, so one is uh, on this side and f2 is on this side and the c2 is on this side because it corresponds to the the piece of the lens that is in fact on the right side okay so trying to make sense of uh, all these uh, parameters so let's see what happens with the diverging lens uh, so let's do the same thing uh, okay let's look first our, our, at our lens so this time c1 is on the left side because it corresponds to the curvature of that surface that is on the uh, left side side therefore on side one uh, C2 is on the right side because it corresponds to that that surface which is on side 2 the right side so we have R2 here R1 here so now let's uh, let's look at our focal points uh, if we take a parallel ray beam like this so we have this ray parallel to central axis uh, we know so this is a diverging lens so it will not converge towards uh, the central axis it will diverge away so you can write it like this for example and you have to continue if you want to find the intersection with the central axis you have to extend this line uh, as a virtual uh, line here a bit virtual ray and you find this uh, f2 so this is f2 because it is where uh, rays intersect rays incident inside one intersect so in this case it uh, it it just that it in, it intersect also on the uh, left side on the side where usually the objects are and in that case it is virtual uh, okay so in this case if you look far away you would see your image so uh, in this case uh, the object would be something very far away because these rays are parallel so an object uh, the image of an object which is very far away would be uh, at this point for someone uh, looking uh, of course uh, on this side somewhere on this side 
okay. because all, all the uh, all the rays will would of course converge uh, uh, to uh, that uh, point huh? okay so uh, like that so uh, anywhere here you would see you would also have uh, uh, something coming into your eye uh, here okay so um so you see that this uh, f2 here is a virtual it's a virtual point therefore we will say that f is negative okay. uh, another thing another definition is a thin the particular case of uh, thin lenses so when the lenses are very thin compared thin is always a relative so it's compared to the other distances uh, in your uh, system so for example uh, uh, a thin lens is a lens in which the thickest part is thin relative to the object distance p and the image distance i and the radii of curvature r1 and r2 of the two surfaces of the lens okay so basically a very thin thin lens so you cannot really distinguish uh, its uh, its size so in that case uh, you have to find a, a representation of it because you you cannot see if it is a double concave double concave concave convex or what so uh, a converging lens is just written as a, like this a double arrow like this and uh, a diverging lens is just written with uh, with the arrow in the in the other, the other direction like this okay so this is the convention uh, here we show uh, the equations uh, governing uh, thin lenses so uh, the object is as usual called a p the image distance is i r1 is the radius of curvature of the lens near a the object so remember side one side two r2 is the other radius so if one consider only rays that make small angles with the central axis so this is gauss approximation again and if f is the local uh, focal length then the thin length equation is this so it is uh, um, the pif formula in fact it is the same formula as the one used for uh, spherical mirrors Okay, you have uh, uh, P is the object, so generally it's positive. Uh, then you have I, which could be uh, positive for uh, real, real images and negative for virtual images. And your F, so F is uh, positive for a converging lens and uh, negative for a diverging lens. Uh, you also have, like for uh, spherical mirrors, you have the same uh, same formula for the magnification uh, minus i divided by p so again the magnification your image we will see some examples soon could be uh, uh, inverted or non-inverted so you will uh, change uh, uh, the sign here uh, it can be greater or smaller than the object uh, etc uh, we have another uh, equation here so this is for a general lens uh, the so-called lens makers equation so your lens is defined uh, so this is for a thin lens in air okay in air uh, otherwise uh, this would be actually the, the medium outside the lens okay so here in just one and n is is uh, uh, the index of your lens r1 is uh, uh, so the radius of the first uh, curve uh, of the first refracting surface and R2 is the other, other refracting surface so this uh, so this equation gives you uh, uh, as a function of the properties of your lens the focal point all right so uh, about the uh, uh, the derivation of these three uh, equations uh, we don't learn anything new in terms of physics or uh, calculation methods using uh, 
from these. So I'll let you look in the book. You may ask if you have questions. The derivation in uh, Halliday and the co-workers is, uh, is uh, here. Uh, basically, the, the, uh, uh, the tactic, the strategy, uh, because this uh, lens is made of two uh, spherical refractive uh, refracting surfaces. So I'm going to, break, uh, to make a small drawing here. First, uh, so let's take the example of uh, I will do it here of a converging lens. So you have uh, this one. So first, you take an object here, let's say, and you find the image of that object uh, from uh, from this medium, so into this medium, which has index n, let's say. Let's say this is one for simple air and index n. So you will find the, the image somewhere using the tools we are, have already uh, shown of that object. And then you take that image as you say it is the new object for the second refracting surface. So now you, you imagine uh, you have a medium one, uh, the air on this side, and on this side you have index n. Okay, and you imagine that your image is now the new object, and you find the image of that new object uh, by this refracting uh, surface, that new refracting surface. So it would be somewhere uh, here. So you basically apply two times uh, the equation of refracting surface in order to find the lens uh, equation. Uh, in fact, we are going to play this kind of game. Uh, uh, first, finding an image from one uh, system and then taking that image as the object for another system in some examples uh, when we will actually mix two lenses. Let's see how we can locate uh, images uh, using uh, ray diagrams. So, uh, okay, so we have we have here a converging lens. We have an object here. So there are basically three uh, smart rays, okay, that you can use uh, to easily find uh, an object, uh, the image of an object. So first one is a ray that is initially parallel to the central axis of the lens will pass through the focal point F2. So that's why R1, so this one, parallel to central axis will pass through F2. Okay. So as uh, I said before, you need only two rays because there is stigmatism. You need only two rays to find out uh, the image. So then you can look... Uh, so a ray that initially initially passes through focal point F1 will emerge uh, the from the lens parallel to the central axis. So this is the reverse of um, in some sense of the first ray. If your your ray, so ray two, goes passes through F1, the focal point on, on this side, it will emerge parallel. So and your intersection will give you the image. Uh, this works for any system. Any system that has a focal point, uh, these rays are, uh, uh, can be used. So now, uh, a particular uh, ray that is uh, specific to lens is a ray that is initially, initially directed towards the center of the lens. So ray 3 here will emerge from the lens with no change. So that's quite convenient. Uh, you just uh, It's just a straight line, and you can find your intersection. OK, so let's, let's um, investigate uh, how a lens can produce an image using this animation. So our object is here. We can... Uh, move it somewhat and we have a lens 
uh, here and the image is uh, uh, here and these crosses are the focal points so here you see that we have selected uh, the so-called principal rays so one ray is going straight through the center of the lens and therefore is not bent and another ray uh, is taken parallel uh, to the central axis and it will focus therefore it will uh, intersect the central axis at the focal point and <coughs> with these two uh, rays you can find out the image of that the tip of this pencil is here you can also take uh, this third ray if you if you wish uh, any ray that intersect uh, the focal point with a merge parallel to the central axis all right so let's move around this uh, and see what happens uh, you see that uh, let's start a bit far away uh, okay so first of all you can see that if i go away from the central axis you have a uh, an, object, an image uh, that is also going away uh, from the central axis if we get closer to the lens then our object is further away farther away and becomes bigger it's inverted always inverted it's a real object uh, image because these rays are real okay so um, let's see what happens when we get the object gets closer to the focal point in uh, four mirrors we saw that something was happening for some type of, of mirrors spherical mirrors so let's see what happens now the, the image is very far away so when i am exactly at the focal point you see that these rays are now parallel so the image is somewhere very far away at infinite distance it is there but in at infinite distance and what happens in the when i cross that boundary so inside the focal point between focal point and uh, the lens so then i see that uh, so vi this ray still is the same it is parallel and then intersect that focal point and goes away but that one is uh, changing you see and uh, so now normally uh, to find the image we have to find the intersection of these two rays that one and that one uh, they do not intersect here so we have to uh, extend them uh, on the right uh, on the left side of the lens and see where they intersect so for to do this uh, uh, we can check this box they will show these rays uh, they will draw them uh, in, a in a green in green so you see these are the extend the lines in the virtual world in some sense and you see that the, the, the image is now a virtual image on the same side as of the lens as the object and it's not inverted so let's continue in that case it uh, just get as we get closer to the lens it gets closer also but still stays virtual and non-inverted okay okay that's it we can cross over the lens so that's it we can have either a real object like this or a virtual object when we are uh, in this range uh, we can play uh, also with this so uh, for example we can test the lens maker equation where you have the refractive index of the lens so what happens in this case okay you can check with the, with the formula that it uh, it makes sense that it it is uh, like this uh, also we can change the curvature so r1 r2 so in this case it is the same r1 equal r2 so let's see a, a smaller curvature you get closer to the the focal points uh, decreases so you can check with the the, the lens maker equation that uh, this is consistent uh, okay let's play again also with this we can change something change object oh, okay whatever yeah okay you can check uh, all these uh, screen okay let's put a screen actually let's use a, a kind of light here and uh, put a screen somewhere we can move that screen 
and uh, you s you see that uh, actually the screen will be uh, menu rays. Yeah. So so in fact the, the light here uh, emits in uh, isotropic uh, isotropically in all directions, but only the, the rays that intersect the lens with that will actually fo be focused. Uh, like that. So what you see here is in fact uh, the intersection of the rays that intersect the lens, like this. And uh, if I move now that uh, thing, I see that uh, the closer I get to the focal point here and the, the whiter it is, so in fact the brighter it is. And this makes sense because this is conservation of energy. Okay, The power across that are uh, across these, uh, in between these two extreme rays, let's say, uh, is the same at whatever position. Okay, so uh, sh here what you see is uh, the, so if you take the integral over the whole surface here, you would get the total power. And here the power, let's say here, is all concentrated around that point. Okay, so the intensity he here, which is the flux of energy uh, per square centimeter and per second, is very high. That's why you can burn actually using the sun and, and the lens, you can burn paper when you focus the light of the sun on the paper, because the intensity, the, 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 which is the, the power per square meter, is extremely high. Okay, and uh, as you go here, so now the, the power is distributed over a larger area, so the intensity is lower and lower as you get close to the lens. All right, so that's all uh, for this animation. So this slide summarizes what we have seen. So when you have uh, an object here uh, away from the focal point F1, you have a, a real object inverted uh, here. And when the object is uh, within, uh, in between the focal point and the lens, then you get a virtual uh, image uh, and non-inverted. And uh, this was for converging lenses, but um, so you can get either real images or virtual images, but for um, diverging lenses, you can get only virtual images. So this is an example. Uh, you have your object here, your uh, diverging lens here. You take a typical smart ray, so one that is uh, going, uh, let's say, through the center of the lens, so it is not bent like that. This is ray three, actually. You can take uh, ray one, which is parallel to the central axis, and then uh, emerges such that it should intersect F2, which is here. So you have to extend the line with a virtual ray, like that. And you can take uh, also a ray that intersect F1, like this, and it will emerge parallel to the central axis. This is ray 2. And also you have to extend this line uh, with a virtual ray, and the intersection of these uh, rays gives you the position of the image. And in this case, it is the intersection of virtual rays, so therefore it is a virtual object. Okay. And it is on the uh, left side. <coughs> Notice that uh, uh, in general a real object will be on the right side of the lens, on in the on the opposite side compared to the uh, to the object. And uh, for virtual uh, images, they will be on the same side of the lens as the object. So this slide uh, again uh, uh, says the same thing, except that you have uh, here. Uh, general conclusions, like uh, a real inverted image I is formed by a converging lens when the object O is outside the focal point. So we say outside the focal point when it is farther away. Uh, when it is uh, between F and the lens, we say that it is inside the focal point. And uh, uh, so in this case the object is uh, inverted, real inverted, in this case uh, virtual non-inverted. A diverging lens forms a virtual image with the same orientation, so non-inverted. Uh, and this does not depend on whether O is inside or outside the focal point. All right. And uh, uh, yes, one thing is that real images are formed on the side of a lens that is opposite the object. 
Okay. So in other words, uh, if your object is on the left side of the lens, real images forms on the right side. So this is a kind of real side world. And uh, uh, virtual images form on the on the same side as the object. So so when uh, if your image forms on the same side as the object, so the left side in this case, it is virtual. So this indeed is the case in this case, and it is also the case in uh, in this drawing. So these are general uh, results that you you had better know. Uh, it help solving problems. This slide uh, shows you the, uh, the pro some uh, uh, methods that uh, you can use uh, for problem solving, uh, so for any kind of optical system like uh, mirrors and uh, lenses. So first, draw a ray diagram as precise as possible, uh, but even a rough one can serve as confirmation of your uh, results. So choose one point on the object and draw at least two, preferably three uh, if you are not sure, of uh, the smart uh, easy to draw rays. And the image point is where the rays intersect. Okay, so this is with the drawing. For now you can use uh, uh, the, uh, the formulas, uh, like the PIF formulas. Um, to, for you can do an analytical uh, solving. So if you're for analytic uh, solution, you solve for the unknowns in the thin lens equation and the magnification equation. The thin lens equation involves reciprocals, so don't forget to take the reciprocals. So it's, uh, when I say the PIF formula, it is 1 over P plus uh, 1 over I equal 1 over F. And uh, be careful about the signs. Huh? So follow the sign conventions and check. This is very important. You check that your results, analytical results that you obtain via mathematics, are consistent with your ray. Okay. If you find a virtual image in your ray diagram and this tells you, the equation tells you that i is positive and therefore should be real, then you should uh, find your mistake somewhere. It could be either in the drawing or in the mathematical treatment, so be careful about that. So from here on, you have uh, the weapons to uh, to put several uh, optical systems together to make a very uh, complex uh, system, like you could put together mirrors, lenses, etc., for, to make a complex uh, a microscope or uh, whatever. Something like that. So let's look at what happens when we take uh, a very simple system, when we put two lenses together. So the, what is the, the method strategy to solve uh, for this? So uh, we want to, to find the image of an object through, uh, the, two, uh, go, uh, through the two lenses. Okay. So let's uh, look here. You have a central axis, you have one lens here, and you have another one there. Okay, we put it, it is here, put it in the dash, uh, as a dash the line here for now, but it is there. Okay, you have that one and that one, and you want to know, you have an object here, and you want to know where is the, uh, the image. So, uh, strategy is, so step one, you ignore neglecting lens two, you locate the image I1 produced by lens one. Okay, so it's very easy, you know how to do you find the image uh, by uh, lens 1. So in this case, it is here, I1, let's say, it is a real inverted uh, uh, image. Uh, okay, so you determine everything. You find the lateral magnification, M1. So of course, uh, you find if it is real, virtual, whatever, etc. Step 2. Now you uh, neglect uh, uh, lens 1, and uh, so this is step 2, and uh, you treat I1 as the new object for lens 2. So it's like of a matrix transfer thing. 
okay you first uh, when you have a complicated system uh, a layered system you first uh, look at uh, what is happening through the first layer and then you continue by the second etc all right so now i1 is the object of lens 2 and you locate the image image i2 produced by the second lens so in this case uh, uh, it is a real image uh, inverted compared to that one okay all right so now there is a, so this this uh, example is very simple uh, the first image is real uh, here and it is on the left side of the second lens so it is very easy this is just uh, considered another object and you have uh, finally uh, the final image which is inverted compared to this one and real so this is easy now you may have a problem so i'm going to show you what kind of problem you may have so let me draw it here this is your uh, central axis uh, let's take uh, a thin lens here so this is l1 let's go with the first lens uh, we can take another lens uh, let's say here can be anything so now what happens if your object here happens to be on the right side of L2? That's a problem because uh, we are used to for our equations, the lens equation, etc. Our uh, object must be on the left side of the lens okay so again this is because of the convention used in this book so uh, so how to deal with that is actually written here so if uh, if i1 lies to the right of a lens 2 like here treat it as the object of lens 2 uh, as usual but take the object distance p2 in the equations as a negative number okay so usually p is, is a positive number remember but if it is on the wrong side in some sense of the lens take it as a negative number so you can you may remember that using a uh, uh, what I, I I say like uh, this the left side of a lens is uh, typically where you put the object and uh, uh, it's also um, uh, the place where virtual images are produced therefore the left side uh, of the of the lens is the kind of virtual world for images and the right side of a lens is the real world for images but on the contrary it becomes the, the virtual world for objects right so it is on the virtual object side of of lens 2 you can call that the virtual object are real and the positive number in the equation on the left side and negative virtual on the right side but it's a way to remember uh, these things okay so don't forget that for the when you use the equations uh, then finally after that you find the lateral magnification m2 okay and the total magnification so for both lens is given just by the product m1 m2 okay so when you draw your rays uh, so uh, when your object is on the right side it is uh, you can just draw, uh, draw as usual uh, you can take uh, something like that and uh, another one crossing the lengths like this so this the diagram doesn't really care if you are on the right side or, or the left side it is for the equations eh? for the signs so this is an example actually uh, uh, here you have a, a converging lens plus a converging lens so you have all the rays here so object is here 
uh, you have f, uh, so you don't need to call it f1, f2, uh, you can call it fa, uh, fa prime. And this is your, your image by the first lens, lens A, and then you take that as the object for lens uh, B, and you find your image B. So this is a very simple one because the object uh, I A is on the left side of B, so it's very uh, easy to just do the things in sequence. But uh, remember that uh, you can uh, assemble anything like a lens plus a mirror and a converging lens plus a diverging lens, uh, etc. And you can add more, of course. Uh, this is a, an interesting example when you, s you have a converging lens plus a diverging lens. So as shown here. So this is actually a technique that is used to find out uh, um, the focal length of the second lens, of the diverging uh, lens. So uh, the solid rays here are the real rays. So, they, uh, so the object is at infinity here. And it comes like this, so it is bent a little bit by this one. It is bent all, um, away from normal. Uh, uh, it is bent uh, so diverging compared to uh, this one. It is a bit diverging because of the diverging lens. And uh, your image is here by the two lenses. All right. So, um, so. Uh, how to, to deal with that? You should first find the image produced by the first lens, the converging one, and you will find it here. Okay, and then you take that object as the image for the for the con uh, diverging lens, which is here. And uh, be careful, here it is on the right side of the lens, therefore on the wrong side in some sense. Therefore, it should be taken negative uh, in the thin lens equation. And uh, okay, so you you should. Uh, define this final image and because what we are looking for here is the focal length of this one you will solve uh, for that using the equation so i let you uh, read this and uh, then the next slide will show you the solutions so you may pause the video and try to find out by yourself uh, how to how to do and this is the solution Okay, so, so we find here a, a focal lens that is negative because it's a, a diverging lens. Okay. Okay, and the O, so I suppose this, uh, yeah, look, look at this, this is interesting point. For the diverging lens, the object is virtual because it is on the right side of the lens. So you take, uh, that was the image actually of produced by the first lens. So you take it as a negative number uh, in this equation, okay? Because it is a kind of virtual object. Okay. So if you have any question about that, please ask uh, later. Yeah. So this is, there is an interesting note also here. Uh, the converging lens must be stronger, so stronger. Uh, than the diverging lens, uh, so that is, uh, it must have a focal lens uh, uh, length whose magnitude is less than that of the diverging lens, so it must uh, focus more strongly. Okay, so this is what it means. Uh, let us finish with a small uh, talk about uh, the human eye. So it. A simplified picture of it is shown here. So basically you have, a, a, what is interesting for us here is that you have a kind of lens here. So the shape can be uh, adaptive. Uh, it can adapt to uh, the light getting in. And uh, you have uh, you have an image that is formed on the, uh, I think the retina, uh, here, somewhere here, uh, like this. Okay, so basically you have a lens and uh, an image formed at the cornea. Sorry, not the retina. All right, and it works like this. So, uh, so you see that your your lens should adapt such as that uh, uh, your uh, image will be formed on that location somewhere here. 
Okay, so uh, depending on the distance and the length must change because uh, otherwise if it was uh, were fixed, uh, the position here would change also. The distance from the lens would change. Okay, so and also it's, uh, you may probably know that uh, if you receive a lot of light in your eye suddenly, your, your uh, uh, how is it called, the, the lens? I'm not sure it's called the lens. But anyway, this piece uh, uh, shrinks, suddenly shrinks, and becomes very small. Okay, and on the contrary, uh, if you enter suddenly a dark, a very dark, like a tunnel or something, a very dark place, your your lens be becomes very large in order to capture as much light as, as possible. All right. So and when uh, okay, when you age or you may have a defect also. So when your lens has a defect and cannot focus at the right place, here you can use uh, some um, some glasses to correct. So some corrective glasses can be made to correct for uh, either a focusing that is too too short or too long uh, here. So these are names myope myopie maybe it's not written here. Far sight, okay, or near sighted eye, etc. All right. So to finish, uh, these are uh, these are the, this is the formula summary. Uh, so this slide is for mirrors and spherical surfaces. Okay, all the equations, the useful rays, and the convention on the signs. Uh, this is a sphere for spherical refractive uh, surfaces. Okay, and the next slide is for lenses. So you have uh, the P formula for thin lenses, magnification, the lens maker's equation, remember the sign conventions for all of these, and the useful rays for locating images of lenses.